Welcome back Defenders, Jake here. I want to start today's video by thanking you, the viewer at home. Thank you for staying informed, thank you for staying engaged, thank you for continuing to support Ukraine. This year is going to be very difficult for Ukraine. I still believe Ukraine is going to win this war, and Russia more or less is going to collapse in on itself. But it's probably not going to happen this year. And this year will be very difficult to watch. There's lots of fun and entertaining stuff you could be watching on YouTube right now, but instead you're choosing to watch this video. So once again, thank you for staying informed, thank you for staying engaged, thank you for continuing to support Ukraine. I'm going to start with this story. Russian overnight strike kills five in northeastern Ukraine. Once again, Russia committed a double-tap strike. This is where you bomb a civilian area. You wait for the first responders to show up. Medics, police officers, firefighters. You then bomb it again to kill the first responders. Russia is doing this frequently now. And this is a heartbreaking video of a young firefighter responding to this double-tap strike after his 52-year-old father responded first. So this is the son showing up to the double-tap strike, finding that his father, also a firefighter, has been killed. Eternal memory to Vladislav Lojenko, a firefighter in Kharkiv who died saving the lives of civilians. The Russians are terrorists, they're pure evil, and they will be defeated. President Zelensky reports that Russia used over 4,000 missiles, Shahid drones, and guided aerial bombs just in the month of March. In a single month, 4,000 missiles, drones, and aerial bombs launched against Ukrainian cities. Here is a video inside one of Kharkiv's uh, thermal electric plants. Five out of the six have been completely destroyed by the Russians, and this is their handiwork. <laughs> All of these attacks by Russia are war crimes. When this war is over, every general who ordered these attacks, every pilot who launched these missiles, they will all be held accountable. Russia will pay to rebuild every single one of these uh, civilian electric power plants. So this shows you the success of Russian strikes by month, and this is just for long-range cruise missiles. This doesn't count gliding bombs or, or drones. And in January of 2023, Russia only had nine successful strikes with long-range cruise missiles. Fast forward to January of 2024, and they had 45. Same with March of 2023, only 20. This year, 44. This is because MAGA Republicans have been blocking military aid from the United States. Ukraine is low on air defense systems. They need more systems. They need more missiles. And they needed them yesterday. President Zelensky states this. Ukraine needs more Patriot systems to protect Kharkiv and their other cities. 
Here is the map of all of Russia's recent strikes. You can see the dates, March 22nd, March 31st, March 29th. Russia is executing on their plan. We go back to the winter of 2022. Russia said, we're going to destroy all of Ukraine's energy infrastructure to make the entire country uninhabitable. And now with air defense systems low on missiles, they're getting through and they're destroying thermal power plants, hydroelectric power plants, and gas storage facilities. Luckily, we're going into summer. It's going to be brighter and warmer. But none of this is going to be fixed by next winter. And more than likely, millions of Ukrainian civilians, especially women and children, are going to have to leave Ukraine before this winter, go to the EU or anywhere else they can get refugee status, as this is Russia's goal, make the entire country uninhabitable. Russian military says they've recruited 100,000 contract soldiers since the beginning of this year. More or less, Russia is recruiting about 1,000 a day to replace their losses. Russia is losing, killed, wounded, or captured about a thousand a day. And these videos keep coming out online, but it doesn't seem to stop anyone. This video is of a Russian mother pleading for help for her son, Mikhail Tarasov, 20 years old, from Bashkortostan. Her 20-year-old son joined the Russian military to defend the motherland. And this Russian mother is going to describe how her son has been treated in the Russian military. Hello, I am the mom of a serviceman who participates in the war in Ukraine. He is a contract volunteer. He voluntarily signed a contract and went to serve. Uh, so here's a picture of the Russian man. He went to protect people and the motherland. He is very young. He is only 20 years old. My boy was wounded twice. He received the second wound already in the Avdivka direction. No aid was provided. He was sent to the hospital, kept there for five days, and then sent back. He had a light contusion and a shrapnel wound under his eyes. The child is losing his sight, but that's only half the trouble. After that, he was beaten up. He started stuttering. His head started shaking. The first wound was also a contusion, a shrapnel wound also under the eye. He did not pass the military medical commission the second time, but he was still immediately sent back to the war zone. And now he has been beaten up again for the second time. They took him to a field in a car, they beat him up, and they left him there. They took his personal belongings, his documents, his salary cards, and he's afraid to go back there, afraid to go back to his unit. He doesn't want to return there. I don't know what to do, what we should do, what attempts to make, where to appeal, where to look for the truth, where to look for protection. He says, Mom, I don't want to die because such a lawlessness is going on. Okay, they die on the battlefield, but their own people beating them up? mocking them and abusing them as much as they can. They do whatever they want. She's speaking of her son's uh, military leadership. There is no control over them. It is very far away and I do not have the opportunity to go there and solve all of this. I'm trying to appeal somewhere, but time is running out. And now he has left. He does not want to go back there. He does not want to serve because commanders of senior ranks throw the guys into the thick, leave them there. There are a lot of dead, a lot of wounded who are not taken away from the battlefield because there is no evacuation system at all. I ask you very much, please help us to deal with this situation. He's in the military unit number 01591. Sounds pretty bad, but this is consistent with all the other videos I've seen on Russian social media. 
of wives and parents concerned about their sons and husbands. Russia plans to mobilize 300,000 additional troops by June, according to President Zelensky. This feels about right. But the next big event in Russia is the May 9th Victory Day Parade. So this is coming up in exactly a month. I think Putin doesn't want to rock the boats prior to the parade. This is a big propaganda event, the biggest holiday in Russia, more or less. So I think Putin is going to wait until after the May 9th Victory Day Parade and then get this mobilization going. Behind the scenes, equipment orders are being placed, pieces on the board are being moved around. But yeah, they're going to call up 300,000 additional men probably in mid-May. According to the Wall Street Journal, Macron urges Europe to toughen stance against Putin, but the Allies, specifically Germany and the United States, are resisting. He put forward proposals to move away from the strategy of drawing clear red lines in respect to the war in Ukraine. The United States has done this. Germany has done this. Chancellor Schultz says we will not send Taurus cruise missiles. President Biden says no American boots on the ground. But President Macron of France is correct. We should be adopting strategic ambiguity. Even if France has no intention of ever sending French troops to Ukraine, by saying that all options remain on the table, this gives something for the Russians to worry about and think about and potentially plan for. So he's correct. The United States, Germany, everyone else in NATO, they should st stop drawing red lines for themselves. Stop giving promises and guarantees to the Russians of what we won't do. And say as long as Russia continues this war, aside from a nuclear first strike, everything else is on the table. This is what you're going to have to think about every single night, Russia. The French and the Russian defense ministers hold a rare talk uh, this month. Shoigu wanted to call the defense minister of France, warning him against deploying troops to Ukraine. This is the first time that Shoigu has called his counterpart in France in 20 months. In 20 months, these guys haven't talked. But because France made such a bold, powerful statement, now the Russians are concerned. They're worried. It's already yielding results. So thank you to the people of France. Thank you to Macron. I know why France is doing this, given that Russia continues to attack their proxies uh, in Africa. But at this point, I don't care about the motivation as long as they're working towards defeating the Russians. And this is becoming a big story. Kremlin Finance Political Influence Network in Europe scandal widens. 24 European officials have been named. These European politicians allegedly benefited directly from promoting Moscow in European media. Some accused say it's really left-wing Europe big brother trying to undermine popular right-wing politicians. These are the politicians from various European countries who have been named. I think this scandal began with Czech intelligence uh, figuring out that the Russians were sending money to Voice of Europe to promote Russian propaganda and weaken support for Ukraine in the European Union. I wish I could say I'm shocked, but I'm not. The Russians have a lot of money. They have a lot of gold mines. And they have no problem bribing Western politicians to promote their propaganda in the West. Obviously, there should be a fair investigation, and these people should be able to prove their innocence or refute the evidence. But these people are traitors. Europe is at war. Russia has declared war more or less on all these countries. And these right-wing politicians shill for the Russians. Which brings us to the biggest Russian asset in the West. 
Trump media was saved in 2022 by a Russian American under criminal investigation. Trump's social media company went public relying partly on loans from a trust management by a person of interest to prosecutors. Okay, let me see if I can explain this scandal. So going back to January 6th of 2021, Trump on social media incited a riot at the Capitol. People died in this riot at the Capitol. If you want to call it a coup, it sure looked like a coup attempt. And Trump was kicked off almost every social media platform. LinkedIn banned Trump because of January 6th. So Trump decided to start his own social media company called Truth Social. And somebody probably explained to Trump that he could make a lot of money if he just took his Truth Social app public. These are called IPOs, Initial Public Offerings. And you can tell how much money Trump has based on the market cap of the company. I don't know what percent of the shares that Donald Trump owns. It's probably around 50%. So if the market cap of Trump Media and Technology Corp is $6.2 billion, then in Donald Trump's brokerage account, he has about $3 billion worth of shares in his own company. Now, Donald Trump would love to dump these shares and get the money for it. But usually when you start selling, it causes the stock price to collapse. You don't make as much money. Additionally, when a company goes IPO, there are, there are lockup agreements for the original investors, the original owners. They have to wait six months, nine months, or a year or whatever before they can start selling their shares without a penalty. So the story is, in 2022, uh, this Russian gave Donald Trump a loan to keep this company going. And then this Russian told all of his friends, hey, you should invest now. When the thing goes IPO at $70, you can then cash out and make a bunch of money. The stock price has collapsed 33% in the last five days. The reason why is... Trump's social media company doesn't make any money. Truth Social made $4.1 million in revenue for 2023. Not $4.1 million in profits, revenue. And the company overall lost $58 million. Because it's a publicly traded company now, they have to disclose quarterly statements about how the company does. And this company doesn't make money. It's never going to make money. What advertisers are going to want to advertise on Truth Social? Sure, there's the MyPillow guy, but not a lot of mainstream companies want to advertise on Truth Social. So this guy, who is he? Who is Anton Postolinikov? Kremlin-linked fintech guru saved Trump media. Postol Nikov is reportedly the nephew of Alexander Smirnov, a former Russian deputy minister of justice who worked in President Putin's office up to 2017. Postol Nikov is also the subject of a criminal investigation by the FBI and the Department of Homeland Security over the insider trading from this acquisition. There are lots of people in the world that Donald Trump could get a loan from. But why is it always Russia? There are so many Russians in Donald Trump's social network and sphere of influence. No American president in history has ever had so many direct ties to Russians as Donald Trump. So this rightfully has the NATO allies concerned. Allies are considering moving the Rammstein Group uh, under the direction of NATO and not the United States to shield it from Trump, given that Trump is publicly saying he's going to encourage the Russians to attack NATO countries if they don't pay up. NATO is eyeing a 100 billion Ukraine aid funds 
uh, and they want to try and get this passed ahead of the November election. So for everyone in the world who doesn't support Donald Trump, I'm going to recommend this site if you want to follow the polls for yourself. Uh, the website is electoral-vote.com. I've been following this website since 2004, and in 20 years, the website really hasn't changed. So it's kind of like a old-school basic site, but it has a really clean map showing recent polls. And according to the polls, Donald Trump is winning right now. The reason why this is is because Trump supporters for the last three years have been engaged. They've been upset. They want revenge. They've been motivated. But don't worry. The election season doesn't really start until after the conventions. Joe Biden is fundraising billions of dollars that he's going to spend on his re-election. It's going to pay for field organizers, canvassers, you know, door knockers. They'll get out the votes in um, September, October, November. My prediction is more or less the same thing as the 2020 election. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So 81 million people voted for Joe Biden in the 2020 election. I think these people are going to show up again to stop Donald Trump from becoming president. Having no choice, Kiev is willing to accept a 60 billion U.S. aid in any form, even if it's a loan. Congress comes back from recess, I think, on Monday, and nobody knows what's going to happen. Is Speaker Johnson going to be removed from the chair by Marjorie Trader Greene? Are more Reagan Republicans going to resign from the House, giving Democrats control? Will a group of courageous House Republicans finally uh, sign the discharge petition. We don't know. But Mike Johnson hates his life right now. Nobody in the world is happy with him. I, I read the comments on Twitter, and even MAGA supporters are pretty unhappy with Johnson for even saying he's open to the idea of military aid to Ukraine as a loan. But Russia's gasoline industry is uh, foobard. Output slides 12% in late March amid all these Ukrainian oil refinery attacks. Everyone's going to have to strap in, buckle up. Gasoline and diesel prices globally are going to skyrocket in response to these refinery attacks. But just remember, Russia's going to be hurting the most. What else is going on? Russia's friends beg the EU to leave frozen assets alone. So China, Saudi Arabia, and Indonesia are lobbying the EU to protect Russia's $200 billion in frozen assets in EU banks. This is the game we've been playing for the last two years. Dictatorships and authoritarians around the world love keeping their money in Western banks. Western countries have protections and the rule of law. They're honestly easy to manip manipulate for authoritarians. But if Western banks start seizing money and giving it to victims, victims of genocide, victims of crimes against humanity, well, this makes dictatorships feel very nervous about their money being kept in Western banks. So, of course... People like China and Saudi Arabia are trying to uh, represent the interests of Russia because they're concerned about their own money potentially being seized in the future for crimes they plan to commit. Honestly, don't know which way this is going to go. I hope we take this money and we put it to good use helping Ukraine. So let's get to the good news. Kyrgyzstan will stop accepting Russian payment cards. I don't know if they're doing this uh, to support Ukraine or if they're just concerned about secondary sanctions from the West, but for Russians trying to spend money in Kyrgyzstan, it's going to get harder. 
Estonia says they found two to three billion dollars worth of artillery shells and missiles for Ukraine, but they're now going to have to fundraise in order to make this happen. Potentially good news. The United States has sent over 100 generators to Ukraine amid Russian attacks on their energy infrastructure. 100 generators is nice, but it's not quite $60 billion in military aid. So hopefully something happens in the next two weeks and the United States can do more than just this. The Netherlands has pledged 10 million euros to help Ukraine investigate Russian war crimes. Thank you to the people of the Netherlands. The Latvian government approved 5.3 million euros in support for Ukraine's reconstruction, as well as 4.3 million euros in defense assistance. Thank you so much to the people of Latvia. Final clip I want to share with you is of a completely underground school in the city of Kharkiv. Because the Russians continuously shell the entire city of Kharkiv. It's not safe above ground anywhere for Ukrainian children. So here's a video giving you a tour of this newly opened underground school to hopefully save the lives of Ukrainian kids. Russia will be defeated. That's all for this update video. Glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes. If you found this video informative, give me a thumbs up. Best way to support the channel. Comments and questions, let me know down below. I love hearing from you guys. Till the next video, keep defending the truth, keep defending democracy.